Welcome back, friends. Today, we're hanging out in Studio P, aka my dining room, with a guest who drove like three hours to see me, which I'm pretty stoked about. We've been friends on Instagram for a while, which means very loosely I didn't even know what his actual name was until today. <laughs> but uh, this is going to be his first full-length interview. So welcome to the show, Corey Kaiser. Yeah, thanks for having me. Dude, yeah, thanks for coming. It was what? You said three hours from where? Yeah, I'm from, our, and our business is in Keeler, Wisconsin. So we're like the most southwest town in wisconsin like we're the last thing you see before you go to illinois or iowa is that by corner by platteville yep oh, okay 10 cool. minutes from cool i i biked all the way across the state starting uh in dubuque iowa sure and rode my bicycle all the way because you you know about that race that goes on down there they um ragbri it's like ride across wisconsin yep they do i know ragbri is like a huge biking thing where they bike yeah. across the state of iowa mm. Yeah, they do one across Wisconsin. It's called Ride Across Wisconsin. And you can do two lengths. You can either, like they have a shorter version and a longer version, but people do it a day. Sure. I did not do it in a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't train for it. I just rode my like little seven speed dad bicycle with a basket on the front. Yeah. Uh, took me four days, but yeah, that was a challenge. That was a good time. But I haven't really spent a whole lot of time down in that part of Wisconsin. Being down there, you're closer to Chicago right so do you have a lot of bears fans down there um yeah i mean there's like a good mix especially when you get to iowa because they don't have a team right yeah sure. um but they're still but they're hawkeyes fans right yeah like they're big but there's still a fans. huge packer fan base in iowa sure i mean a lot of them are packers fans but i mean chicago's kind of tricky just because as you get up the the south or the the eastern side of the state it becomes closer than yeah. where we are sure to get to chicago like milwaukee right usually around there it's way easier to get there than for us yeah, sure. I mean, for me, like I'm way closer to Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Definitely not a Vikings fan. No, um, but <laughs> way closer to Minneapolis, and we have a lot of Vikings fans in sure. Eau Claire for that reason. And uh, same way with the Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. Like when I was growing up, I used to watch the Milwaukee Bucks all the time. I played basketball from kindergarten through uh, eighth grade, and then wasn't good enough to play in high school, which <laughs> sucked because I'm <laughs> slow and whatever. Yeah. Um, but they stopped the radio or the TV station stopped showing Bucks games. Yeah. When I was growing up, I forget at what age, but. I was pissed because I watched like every game. Mm -hmm. They switched because we were so close to Minnesota to playing Timberwolves games. Okay. And that was like one of the catalysts for me not watching NBA anymore. So so you don't watch NBA at all? No, not really. Okay. Although I, I tune in when we won. Mm -hmm. um, but I was stuck in, this is, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but, but I was stuck in Croatia. Oh, I got, really? Yeah. I got COVID in Croatia. Sure. And the Red Cross like locked me in this hotel room that sucked. Uh, and I had to stay there for like 10 days. Mm -hmm. Right. Um and they were in it. So I had to set an alarm. Not that it mattered at what time it was because I was in this room for 10 days. Yeah. But I had to wake up at like 2.45 in the morning mm -hmm. to watch them play in the championship <laughs> game and then win by whatever time it was, 7 a.m. Yeah. and then go to sleep. Yeah. I was lucky enough. I was at the game. They, they won it. You, so, you went down there? Yep. Yeah, well, I was in Milwaukee when they clinched versus the wow. Suns. So um that was probably one of the, my favorite games I've ever been to so wow yeah, yeah i mean i've never i've only been to one packer game i've never been to a bucks game at all let's get back though to talk sure. more about your story i usually ask people to say it in their own words so in your own words who are you and what are you passionate about um i am i'm a small town kid uh, I, i've lived in a small town area my whole life i went to platteville uh to be honest because it was close to home um, don't get me wrong. I love the city life. I love to be able to go to Madison, Milwaukee, all these areas, even Eau Claire, yeah. which is big for me. But uh, I just love the state of Wisconsin. I love it for what it stands for. Um, I have a little background in clothes as my uh, parents had a business that did custom apparel for businesses throughout the tri-state area. So I knew a bunch of clothes um, and I kind of wanted to be able to create something that was for one, affordable. Um, to local that people can get behind that whoever loves the state as much as i do yeah. they can get behind the idea and join our community yeah well okay. so a couple different things one that makes way more sense why your clothes are as cheap as they are mm -hmm. i was like looking on your website which it's wisconsin clothing co you can go to them find them on instagram tiktok whatever the link in bio will take you to their page but like, dude, you can't sell hoodies for $30 anymore. Like no, nobody no. else can afford to because they have to pay a middleman to print it. But yep. since you guys can print it, yeah, that I mean, makes we, sense. I, I love to say that we never usually have anything over $60, which you can't find anywhere. No, um, dude, 70 is the standard for like a small business sweatshirt these days for most places. Yeah, and like I said, I'm, I'm from a small town area, so I feel like I never want to get rid of those roots. Right. So when we price our clothes, I don't want to price 
the, you know, anybody out in Wisconsin, especially when, you know, it gets to gifting seasons and you're buying stuff for your, your kids, you know, you want them to love the state as much as you do or be able to represent something more than just a, a name brand logo. Right. Um, so that, I feel like that's what we offer. Yeah. Well, and your demographics different. Yes. Right. Like you're not trying to get all the fashion heads. You're trying to get everybody that's over at the fish fry. Yeah. So <laughs> those people aren't, they're not the type of clientele that is looking to get all dripped out with super expensive uh, apparel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't, you know, we're not selling uh, like, you know, casual or dressy clothes that, I mean, that's never going to be the, the way was the majority of Wisconsinites are. Right. Um, you know, I've been kind of throughout the whole state and I feel like for the most part, it's, you know, blue collar, jeans sweatshirt i mean that's kind of what you see throughout the whole state yeah you look like you're from wisconsin <laughs> i don't but you definitely yeah. do and yeah. what you're wearing is from your brand right that must yep. be the newest one that you started doing yep. yep so it's just a playoff of you know the election we're not a huge politics type people that we don't like to even dive into it but we thought we could play off it and do a little something for old fashions and fish fries I, well i think most people can at least agree that the presidential election is a joke regardless of who wins yeah. so you don't have to pick a side everybody has their own side but we all can laugh at how horrible the situation is yeah. and then you can make a play on like well at least everyone can agree that fish fries are dope yeah i just <laughs> I, i've never been you know and i i love to go to our local bars support local yeah um and you'd be able to have conversations with people in our community even like going out to eau claire and going out and visiting with the people from there right. having fun happy hour whatever it is and i will never talk politics because it just never ends well right yeah. um no matter what or however you feel so yeah. um you know when you i, I like I always tell people when when you join our community, it's just Wisconsin. It's yeah. the good things. It's the positivity. Um, and that's, I feel like that's what I really show in, in all of our videos I make. Yeah. Well, I think right now with the world, it's very polarizing, regardless of like how you vote, people are really kind of going to the extremes of whatever their thing is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When really we're all a lot more similar than we think. Yeah. You know, we just like to find a niche or a box that we put ourselves in and we label ourselves as this, that, or whatever. But really like we're all a lot more similar. And I think a lot of the problem comes from people wherever they're at, they're only surrounded by people that are all from mm -hmm. that same background. So it just like hammers it in more and more and more versus sure. when you travel, you start to realize all these people you otherwise wouldn't necessarily agree with aren't that much different than you. It's yep. just, they're growing up with a different oh, thing around absolutely. them. Um, and I feel like, you know, like I said, I don't talk a lot of politics, but where you grow up a Democrat or Republican and you just have to believe whatever that faction believes right where i just feel like that's so wrong right well you would be ostracized depending on where you're at yeah right? like, like if, if hey, you were let's all have our own thoughts you could think of some things democrats do is good some things republicans yeah i think mean are good. yeah I mean, they're yeah they're both bad <laughs> okay. exactly so getting into the clothing company um when did you first like did you work for your parents in high school screen printing and stuff or like how did you slowly get into that in general i i was an intern salesman when i was in college for about a year and a half but i've been around it for my whole life so right. i knew the vendors i knew the price points i knew what we can do and can't do on stuff uh so i feel like that that always made sense to me um like I said, I wasn't a huge social media person until we finally switched to become the Wisconsin clothing company. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in college, I really knew what it was about. So it made it very easy for me to make a, a brand out of it. Were you kind of running the brand before it switched names or so like, what was it, your role? Yeah. And I feel like a lot of our followers don't even know this. So in 2018, when I graduated, um, we were called the 608. So we were just a, a brand for our area code in the Southwest part of the state. Um, and as we started getting more traction, people were outside of the area code wanted to start wearing it, you know, whether the 715, the 414, whatever. Was it similar branding though? Like very Wisconsin based Very thing? wisconsin -y, yep. yeah. Okay. And so we just had to make a decision, uh, which was about two years ago, um, to rebrand a Wisconsin clothing company so we could reach the whole state. Sure. Um, and, and right around then is when I really started diving into, you know, co content creation, creating stuff around Wisconsin, posting every day, being very consistent. Um, and really trying to grow our community. Yeah. Well, social media is by far the biggest tool for any of that type of stuff. Absolutely. Right? Like it sounds great to when people are like, oh, you should get in more stores or whatever. It's like, well, yes, kind of. But when you sell wholesale, all of a sudden the price has to go way up, right? Mm -hmm. Because both parties have to be able to make money. Mm -hmm. Then you have to be hounding these people to carry your product. But then they sure. also have to get a whole size run and hope that whoever comes in actually yep. wants that specific size. Yeah. So having like an online presence where then you can sell directly like that direct to consumer is kind of the move. You know? Absolutely. And we do sell to like a lot 
lot of boutiques and a lot of pharmacy. Like we have a bunch of wholesalers we work with now. Right. Um, but yeah, you kind of look at social media. It's kind of like your portfolio. Yeah, it really Where is. anyone can go look, look at, for one, what you're all about. Right. What yeah. your content's about um, and what your clothes stand for. And I feel like that's a really good gauge. And, you know, I, as much as I don't want to say following matters, it but does, to, yeah. especially when you want to start getting into bigger wholesalers, it does matter. Yeah. Um, you know, because it all comes down to demand. Yeah. Well, and there's obviously there's more to it, right? Like sure. people have fake followers and whatever, but like it, it really is like a social it's I don't want to say it's like a social status, although it is to a certain degree for some things. Um, but it shows how relevant you are, right? Like I was talking to a, a different business owner that I think I'm going to help them with some content stuff. And I was explaining that to him. I'm like, you know, regardless of if you have the best service at mm -hmm. the best, best price point, mm -hmm. a lot of people like just look on Instagram. Yep. to see what your brand is sure. like people google things sure but the problem is if you google something whatever pops up somebody could have just paid somebody to have a good website right yep. so you can look and say this website's nice but there's a lot of scammy websites that still look nice right so what a For lot sure. of people do is they look to see either the google reviews if there's a whole bunch of them mm -hmm. or one of the things a lot of people look at is how yep. many people follow them on things like instagram and, and whatever else so i think it matters quite a bit plus people people like to like things other people like Absolutely. Right? <laughs> so if they see yeah. a brand that a lot of people they know already follow and like, they're more apt to also oh, like Oh, for it. sure. And I, I feel like um, a lot of small businesses make the mistake of just shoving their business down your throat. Yeah. Um, where that's the only thing they talk about. Um, it works in a lot of good instances like podcasts where, I mean, that's good to be, I mean, because you're doing different things all the time. Right. But like if you sold, you know, uh, if you sold some one thing, you know, you had a boutique and all you did was say, buy my clothes. I feel like that gets really exhausting for consumers to be able to take in. People don't like blatant ads. No, exactly. And I think for us, it's like, okay, so what are we going to do? So, I mean, basically, if you go to our page, you rarely see me talk about our clothes. Mm -hmm. I mean, our name is Wisconsin Clothing Company, which is great. I mean, it gives it away. Right. But for the most part, we are posting, whether it's our videos or somebody else's, we're posting Wisconsin content every day. Yeah. So basically allowing people, we're like, okay, I follow them. You know, I, they do clothes, but I follow them because they have really cool content about our state. And I love that. Right. Well, and I think a lot of it too is being a business owner, opening your mind to like, what are the other potential avenues that can help here? Like mm -hmm. whether it's like getting contracts with, you know, different brands that you're advertising for, you're collaborating with this person or whatever, and realizing the income and all the profit doesn't have to come exclusively from a product on your website. Sure. But yeah, I think if you're blatant about it and you're just like, here's the newest thing that just came out, let me show it to you, show it to you, show mm -hmm. it to you. People don't really care no. about seeing that. They want to like, I, I like to tell people the best salespeople sell themselves as a solution to people's needs, mm -hmm. right? You got to make people just like you and want to support you. Exactly. Now, if, they're, if the product that you do is also helpful to them, then they will get it from you, 100%. but they have to like you yeah. in the first place. Yeah. I just feel like uh, whenever you do social media, it, you have to bring value. To, totally. To whoever yeah. the eyeball, whatever eyeballs are seeing your content, you have to bring value. Um, and like I said, you, you know, if I was posting pictures on Instagram and posting of all of our drops and all of our clothes, and that's all we did, it just would get really old really fast. Yeah. Where now, you know, we could have a video get millions of views because it's about Wisconsin right. and they follow us for it. Well, now they're, you know, they're at least in our following, they're in our community. They'll see the stories of us posting about clothes. They'll see the other intrinsic things that we do with the clothes right where it just kind of grow puts more eyeballs on our clothes but that's not our goal no our it's goal. brand awareness that's happening yes there. right absolutely. yeah totally and people want to be able to identify with something like i said they they don't like being sold to directly not only that but i think in today's day and age granted people don't actually know the business owners you know personally most of the time but still people are much more picky about what they buy from because there's so For many sure. more options. Yep. They like to feel some kind of connection to a brand. That's why so many companies use influencers and stuff, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not just talking about like social media influencers, but like that's why Dodge used Tom Brady, right? Because they know how many people like Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. So people feel an attachment to him or the Patriots oh. or the Bucks or whatever. And then that makes them more, much more apt to Absolutely. care about what this car is. Yeah, you know, nowadays in the clothing world, you know, it's so it's so much leaving the retail space and moving into online that the yeah. only connection that they can't have a feel connection with with the clothes. So, you know, I feel like for the most part they you have to build that trust within your social media that, hey, I, I'm never going to sell you clothes that I wouldn't wear myself that wouldn't be comfortable for me to wear. Yeah. You know, people aren't going to buy from you if they don't trust that your clothes is going to be awesome or right. have the top quality. So I feel like 
that's definitely been something that's been great for us because I am an owner of our business. So I'm the only face that you see on our social media. Right. So like I'm building that trust with all these people and I true, I truly care about everyone that follows. I, you know, I feel like a lot of people that's where they lose, um, some of their following or lose some of the interest in what they're doing is like, I see you comment on a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. I comment on all, as much, as many people's comments as possible. Cause I want to make that connection with them. Yeah. And, and really show them that I care if you comment on our video. Right. And I feel like, you know, you look at a lot of like bigger influencers or anybody where they post a video and that's all they do. Right. And they don't show that love for the people that are supporting them. And I feel like that's something that I've like truly value mm. is making that connection with them. Well, that's one thing that I love about the Midwest in general, for the most part, is I use the term cool guying it. Because mm -hmm. we don't cool guy people. We don't think we're too cool to talk to other people. I've had a lot of people ask me for social media advice. Not that like my Instagram is like mega massive or whatever, but for the area, it's relatively sure. large, yeah, right? So people will ask my advice all the time. And one of the things, I, I remember I was sitting with this one girl kind of explaining to her um, about it. And I said, here's one very easy thing that you can do. Anyone can do this, right? When you make a post for the next 30 minutes, stay on the app and then go comment back on all the other ones. So go to your post that you did before, say the day before, whatever. Now respond to the comments, but then anybody that commented on your post, go to their profile and then comment on one of theirs back. You're reciprocating that love. And when they see that happen, sure. people don't see brands do that for them that often. Yep. So mm -hmm. when they do, it means something to them. And yeah. I personally think that like, if you're willing to put it this way, if you're looking at my content all the time, you're giving me hours and hours and hours of your attention. Mm -hmm. There's no way that I'm going to say I'm too cool to give you the 15 seconds it takes me to go over to your profile or mm -hmm. a minute and a half if I'm watching a 60 second reel and write it, whatever. But like, I can give you a little bit of my time. I understand that not everybody has that. I get that Packers players are a little bit busy. They're not oh, going to sure. sit there and go do that yeah. all day long. But like, if you have time, that's how you build those relationships with people. Not only that, but more and more people are living in the, I guess, metaverse, but like everyone's living online. Yeah. Think about like your closest friends that you talk to. You have a few that you hang out with in person, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm way closer to a lot of people that I almost exclusively interact with online than sure. I am with people in yeah. real life at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like, you know, and, and like you said, like Packer players, I mean, they, I feel like it's for like small business people that need to need to care about who they're interacting with. You know, when you're a Packers player, you don't, I mean, you don't have to care right. as much. Like you don't have time to be doing that. Well, on the social media is not how you make your living. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and they could, they do care about right. the followings, but yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, for me, it's just like, I do, I know the first, like the, when I went live on TikTok for the first time, I know like the first 30 people that started watching my lives. Mm -hmm. Like I, 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 I remember people by name. Like I just truly care. And like, I'll, I'll go on their lives and ask them how they're doing. Right. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm just a small town kid and that, that will never leave me. Right. Where like, I truly think of you as a friend if we're friends on social media. Totally. Like I, I am invested in your life as you're as invested in my business and my right. life. So I, I, I always feel like that gets lost a lot mm -hmm. where people just want followers but don't care enough about who they are. Yeah, I, I, th that's, I feel that way about like artists that don't follow anybody. Yeah. Because you see that, right? Rappers oh, or other people, see, they do it and I'm like- They have zero followers. I'm like, what do you- like, Or I they're get... following nobody at all. And I'm like, yeah. dude, but these people, not only that, but like you, there's other people in your like industry mm -hmm. that like you don't want- Yeah. But I, I have a hard time following somebody like continuously mm -hmm. following them if they don't follow me back mm -hmm. not out of like an ego thing but out of a like man if you really don't care about my time that much like you're showing you don't care then like even if i like what you do i just i'm not i'm not really about it i yeah. would rather give my time and attention and energy to somebody that clearly does care you mm -hmm. know what i mean and maybe they do care but they're not saying it so how am i supposed to know yeah and i mean i feel like that's the day we live in where there's less people that interact and just more mm -hmm. people that look and watch. So, I mean, social media is just going to keep evolving, evolving, evolving. Right. Um, where, like I said, I feel like you have to like adapt every day mm -hmm. to different things. Yeah. So I feel like it's definitely a wild, wild west. Um, but it's definitely been tremendous for us in our business. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity with it, right? Like in, in other areas, you people literally pay for sales leads, right? Mm -hmm. Like it depends on what it is, right? If you're looking to sell a house, like that sales lead is worth more money to you than somebody potentially buying a t-shirt online. Sure. However, every time that you have an interaction where it's like happens from both, yep. they comment and then you go and comment, 
that is a very real sales lead. Mm -hmm. Like you shouldn't like totally disregard what that is. And you don't necessarily like having more of a following helps in a lot of different ways, but like you can make more money and have better relationships and a stronger clientele with 10,000 followers than you can with a hundred thousand, depending yeah. on who they are, know, right? Who they are. And if you're acting, act, actively talking to those people, because then they care, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I've talked to other brands about this too, of like, if they want to deal with influencers or whatever, right? Cause like influencer marketing or social media marketing is like a huge thing. Obviously I was like, not all followers are worth the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Because oh, sure. some people are very casual, don't know necessarily anything about you. They followed from this random thing. They don't care versus people typically like if they follow the show, they've probably listened to me talk for a lot of hours. Yeah. And I'm very grateful that they do. I can't believe they want to because <laughs> I don't want to listen to myself talk this much. But because they do, that means they have a, a bit stronger of a connection with me. Right. I meet yep. people that have For listened sure. to the show or whatever. And it's like, wow, you know a whole lot about me. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Now I want to know about you. But like building that connection is everything. Let's go way back, though. You said something earlier that I'm just curious what your answer is. You said, I just love what you say, what Wisconsin is all about. Mm -hmm. What is Wisconsin all about? Um, to me, like I said, I feel like it's a lot about hardworking people um, that, for the most part, family is the most important thing to them. Their communities, because uh, you look around, we have some of the, we don't have all the huge cities. You know, when people think of big cities, like even Eau Claire, they'd be like, that's a big, that's a big city. For people in Wisconsin, yeah. Yes. You know, you go up north, there's not, I mean, there's small towns. And I feel like, to me, it, I guess the, the number one thing is the respect that we give each other, um, whether you're in the same community as, as whoever. But I feel like that doesn't get lost in any conversation from person to person. Right. Um, and then I've always just loved to be able to socialize. I love the aspect of uh, going out to the bars and going to your local local establishment and happy hour after work and everyone's there talking and having fun, yeah. being able to figure out what's going on in their life. I've, I've always loved that feel. Um, and like I said, I just feel like we're just, we're like, we're just great people. Like yeah. everyone in Wisconsin, just they're, they're down to earth people, um, that just love the state and love what, like I said, what we're about. Yeah. Well, I think part of it is like, we kind of know we're not that cool. <laughs> right because of where we're from it's yeah. like i remember a long time ago i used to go to anime detour every year because i yep. listened to anime or watched anime a lot growing up sure and my friend was trying to get me every year like you should go and i was like no nah, i don't want to go i don't want to go whatever and finally one year i was like fine i'll go but i'm like thinking there's gonna be a bunch of like old dudes in sailor moon that's what i pictured right he's like no mm -hmm. dude it's like a fun halloween party everyone's just dressed up for a weekend you don't have to drive anywhere so you like you can party and i went and that's what it was. It was just like this big party. And it kind of clicked with me. There's going to be bad apples and everything. But it's like, man, all these people are so nice. This is way better to be around. And I think what it was was like, it's because all of these people, know, like they're not the cool people in mm -hmm. their regular day-to-day -day lives, right? So they don't cool guy anybody. They're so welcoming because they're, they're not worried about their status. They sure. don't think they're way too cool to talk to this person or that person or whatever. And there's no pressure. Another thing I've noticed is like you go to a lot of big cities, people move there for a reason, right? It's like people who live in New York, which people mm -hmm. in New York are great, but you know, they have this like, you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, you know, like that saying. Yeah. Well, people go there and they're like, really struggling to make something happen because mm -hmm. it's hard so they don't really have a lot of time for anything that's not helping them achieve that goal mm -hmm. so i tend to find when i'm out there that everyone's always networking like mm -hmm. they always are when they talk to you they're trying to figure out well so what's your social media status what do you do for work how could that potentially inc mm -hmm. like incorporate to help me reach my goal versus people here they kind of just assume that you can't help them with their career Cause like the likelihood of that happening is pretty low. Mm -hmm. If you're going to a bar in a small town, Wisconsin, like the, maybe you'll make like, Oh, I'm going to sell you firewood. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. people know that like for that sure. person's I mean, not going to help them. For the that most way. part, like, like I said, I just feel like, um, like a priority here is we just care about people. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the careers that when you're at a bar, that's doesn't, no one cares. Right. You know, we, we are trying to figure out what's going on in our community. We're talking about what happened last week or what, how, how's the family doing? Right. You know, it, you know, maybe you bring up business, like how's it, how's everything going? But, you know, I feel like that takes a backseat to people so, in Wisconsin yeah. where, um, like I said, I, and it, it kind of goes to show, like even with our social media, we've only been creating content for two years and to have all these people follow and care, mm -hmm. you know, that I think it just shows what we're all about that, um, you know, they, they didn't know who I was, but 
in two year span of creating content for Wisconsinites that all these people have been welcoming to who we are. Right. So, and that's something that I truly cherish. Dude, there's a lot of Wisconsin pride. Oh yeah. People love to tell, like, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. if you're anywhere else, if I find out somebody's from Wisconsin, dude, I was, this was random. I was in Costa Rica and I ran into a family from Eau Claire. Oh really? Yeah, dude. So There's so many small, like small, like small world moments. But I could hear their accent. Oh sure. And so I was like, oh, you're from the Midwest, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. And they're like, yeah, where are you from? And then, yeah, they were from Eau Claire. But the, just the camaraderie of like, oh, my God, you're from Wisconsin, too? Mm-hmm. Wisconsin's the best. Go Pack. Like, yeah. People are like that all over the world. It's Absolutely. pretty wild. Um, and that's, you know, a reason why I kind of wanted to create something like this. Yeah. It was basically so I knew ever I knew there's a, a lot of prideful people in Wisconsin yeah. that would be able to get behind something like this, that all we do is represent the state. And there's not very many people that are making what you make that actually know what they're doing in that department, Mm -hmm. right? Like there's lots of influencers, no offense to Charlie Barron's, he's dope, dude, but like he doesn't know apparel that well. He hires a company to do it and like they do a great job and he Mm -hmm. sells so many shirts and whatever, but he's not from that background. Yeah. So that's not really his area of expertise. Yeah. Like I know there's a lot of people printing stuff that says Wisconsin on it. I don't personally know anybody else that has an entire background specifically in doing that. Yeah. That's creating it and that makes, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie, I mean, he's, if you create content in Wisconsin and want to reach Wisconsinites, he's like, he's the guy, the golden child. Yeah. Yeah. His stuff's awesome. I'm actually, what's crazy is I've never seen him live and my wife got us tickets. We're going to go see him in Dubuque. Oh, cool. Saturday. Well, oh, really? Like literally. I I just saw him not long ago. He performed, did four sets in Eau Claire, which was cool because, uh, Billy Deuce was his opener. One of them anyways. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's the guy who plays the Boston kind of character in all of his skits. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got to see him live and then I ended up interviewing Billy, like, I don't know, two months after the fact or whatever. Cool. And I was down in, uh, Charlie and him have a, a recording studio in Milwaukee. Sure. So I got to go interview him down in the studio, which was pretty dope. So speaking about music, who are some of your favorite music artists? Um, I'm, I'm so over all over the place. Yeah. Me too. Like there's not really a genre I don't love. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, 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 I guess the most I listen to is probably country. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I love Tyler Childers. I love Zach Bryan. Chris Cruzy. Yeah, I don't. Even, I'm not sure. Oh, who that is? Chris honest. Cruzy is uh, from Barron. He's like, oh sure, uh, but he got second place on the show The Voice. Oh, okay. He's also like a quick trip on their team, and he sure. plays shows all over the Midwest all the time. He's sure. Around here, he's like a kind of a local legend kind of guy. Sure. So I mean, yeah, and then like Toby Keith's probably like my favorite country yeah. singer of all time. But like outside of that, like I I love. Um, like I love rock music, um, like Billy Joel, Tom Petty. I love. I even love like Motley Crue. Sure. Um, like I said, the Eagles. I'm I'm so all over the place. It's and then I love rap. It's like crazy. Like I go through. I feel like it goes with the seasons. Like <laughs> sure. in the summer, I'm like listening to country or like rock, and in the winter, I'm listening to like rap. Sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, it depends what you're doing too, right? I'm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I I really don't know if there's music that I don't like love. Oh, like you know what I mean, right? There, I mean, there's probably some. Okay, oh so, for sure. <laughs> so when you started, I'm trying to figure out the timeline here. This is a couple of years ago that you switched it from. Was it two years ago you switched from 608 to being Wisconsin Clothing Co? Yep. Was that already your full time job at that point? And were you kind of like doing? Was most of your income, most of your career, more spent making shirts and you know apparel for other people? Mm-hmm. And this was just kind of like a side thing until Wisconsin Clothing Co blew up on socials is that kind of how it worked so i mean i have like a very big track record of what i like of stuff that i done and do outside of this that like nobody knows well tell me about some of it so like i did real estate and insurance in college i did it throughout all all four years Um, insurance for like farms like insurance for businesses personal personal okay so i I did that and i thought that was going to be my career path until i graduated um i did it my first year out of college but i started the retail brand the 608 um, in 2018. I did that alone um, for about two years, but my our, our family's got a couple things that we do. We have um, an industrial park that we developed. We have a Parkside Estates, which is 101 lots in Keeler that we've developed. Um, so we do a lot with real estate. Um, but about 2022 is when my mom wanted to retire from the custom apparel side. So me and my sister became the majority owners. So at that point I was doing the retail brand, Wisconsin clothing company. We just switched two years ago and, uh, the 
custom apparel side was doing their own thing. I was getting my clothes through them. I was majority owner of both, but I was only doing the retail. So at that point we're like, okay, let's, we merged both companies and then we changed the name of the, the custom apparel, the WCC brands. Um, and, and now I do both under one roof. Okay. But that was all owned by your family anyways, dur- during that time frame. Uh, the, yeah. So the custom apparel was owned and my mom was running it until she retired. Um, how many people were involved when, when you say family, it's hard for me to know if this is extended family, a whole bunch of people, or if it's just kind of like your mom, your dad, your sister, and then you guys had employees that weren't family. What was the, yeah, yeah it was just us. Um, and so it was just, my mom was, uh, my okay. dad had a different job. Uh, so my mom was running it. And then I think at the time when we merged, we had like 14 or 15 employees on the custom apparel side. Okay. Um, and now we're up to like 26. Oh, okay. so in the last two years, so is that mostly because of Wisconsin Clothing Co. or because of all the other brands you keep expanding new accounts? So yeah, it's it's kind of a good mixture of both. Okay, I mean for the most part, um, the the clothing company side is a lot smaller than what we do for custom apparel for businesses, but it's get, given us a lot of great avenues of of people that we've been friends with on socials. Yeah. So the quick trips, the bubblers, the jolly good sodas, the Nicolay Laws, like those people I've met over socials and now we do custom clothes for them right so it's definitely helped both sides um but it's definitely been a mixture of both yeah well that's what i was saying earlier too about like it's not specifically about selling the shirt it's like this is a whole resource especially social media where it opens up avenues for all kinds of different things you know what i mean and you never know exactly where something's gonna go Mm -hmm. but the larger the network you have the better position you're gonna be able to be in because whenever whatever challenge pops up somebody you know could be the solution or you could be the solution for them whenever i have a problem that i can't figure out such as like i recorded the initial uh episodes of the show with song selections not really thinking about why i can't play them because a different show that i liked did that right and then i realized i couldn't do that i'm like well what am i gonna do so then i do what i usually do and i just kind of like put it out there to people everybody i know hey this is the problem i'm working on if you know anybody you know and i just did that for a couple weeks and then all of a sudden somebody was like well why don't you just put it on the radio i was like i didn't think that was an option yeah maybe it is an option you know what i mean and then i got the right email for the right person sent it out there and then boom you know there we are so two years ago you I feel like it was in the last six months, though, that you blew up really quick. You had one video just go stupid viral, right? The turkey thing, the running turkey one. Um, So we've had a couple. I mean, I've been doing TikTok side of things for about a year and a half. What's the TikTok at? Because I haven't, I don't follow it or pay attention to TikTok at all. What's for what? Uh, what's, what's like the, the following at? and like how did that like? Um, was at, that I think eighty six point five thousand. Was followers. that like a pretty quick pop? Um, yeah, I mean the initial probably to like 30 or 40, but it's been just like a slow, like, and I don't say slow, but like a gradual, that was two years ago or a year, about a year and a half. We started doing social media content. Okay. Um, so, and then I think, so we started TikTok a year and a half ago and we've grown it to what it is today through the, the year and a half. It's primarily you doing it. It's just me. Oh, okay. Um, and then for the Instagram side, I really didn't post a lot of stuff, but I feel like when TikTok happened, um, they made short form a very big, valuable thing for them. Right. So, um, we probably had 10,000 followers two years ago. Right. Um, and I think now we're at like 72,000. Yeah. And I, I think probably 45 of it was this year. Yeah. Like it's been in the last six months, like you said, um, we've had a couple, like the Turkey one had like 15 or t- like 18 million views. Yeah. What um, was that one for people? I was trying to describe it so to somebody. It, and like I said, we wanted to start like, and I don't want to say like you take a page, but you learn from other people. Right. So like you look at like, an, you look at like a Barstool Sports, they post everyone's vi- viral videos. Right. So I wanted to kind of be like a small portion of that in Wisconsin where like, it's not just me. Like I'm just posting things for other people. And then, you know, like it's kind of cool. Like now I had one of, uh, uh, a, a lady posting a video of a sandhill crane which okay. sounds like a pterodactyl right and like she was so like happy like oh my god they posted it like right that's cool so um i'd say the turkey one which was just like literally a turkey chasing a kid yeah. in a, and a car running in front of the turkey to stop the turkey from like getting after the kid <laughs> yeah. um and then we had one like which was a midwest goodbye where it was written all the steps that people in the Midwest go as they say goodbye. Like, well, I suppose that got over like 8 million. So I feel like our Instagram's definitely been going like pretty crazy over the last six months. And I'd say it's crazy to see how close it's gotten to TikTok in such a short amount of time. Yeah. So, but we post now to all 
you know, I've, I've learned the lesson. Now we post to Facebook. I think we have just over 16,000 followers on Facebook. We have like 2000 subscribers on YouTube, which is a way different animal. Right. But, um, yeah, that's basically all within a year and a half ish. Yeah. It's hard to keep track of all of it. Do you mostly cross post? Like use the same post across all the different yep. ones? Yep. Okay. Even then it's still a lot because oh, you have to I upload have to them po- separately. And then all the descriptions and everything are different on all of them. If you're doing captions or For like sure. any of that type of yep. stuff. Yep. It's definitely, um, it definitely is, you know, I feel like, I guess you learn and you become, you get a lot more respect for content creators that have been doing it for a long time. Like yeah. even like the younger, like over COVID when all those TikTokers were going crazy, like you kind of get a little more respect for what they were doing, Yeah. you know, and like, oh, they were just dancing they blew up and you're like, well, they had to edit and do all those videos. Now I feel like now right. I understand like that is a full-time job. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget who I was talking to, somebody who is a musician, I want to say, and they basically said like their job is social media and music is what they do for fun. Yep. But really like that's because that is what takes up the majority of people's time nowadays. For and sure. it's really hard to be able to manage that. In any given day, let's say well every day is different when you work for yourself. Let's say for a week, how what does your week look like work-wise as far as like what how much goes into the different social media platforms versus how much goes into actually printing things or the website yep. or what do you do? Um so I work probably about seven and a half to eight hours on the custom apparel side. Um, doing I, what I, specifically s- selling basically selling to other businesses to do their clothes oh okay um i'm we basically we like i said we handle a bunch of accounts in wisconsin iowa and illinois so i do that for the majority of the day when it comes to like we have employees that do our online ordering for yeah. the retail side and then i usually spend about an hour afterwards doing content or I don't say afterwards because it's a lot of times just throughout the day when I get ideas. Right. So I probably spend about seven, eight hours doing the custom apparel side and, and being a part of that side of the business. And then about hours goes into content creation at some point. Sure. So that's like every day. Um, I do also, I'm a part-time owner in a tavern, a small bar. So that's about a little bit of my time. Um, and just not drinking, usually doing bills, but, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, so I'm kind of a little bit all over the place, but for the most part, it's a custom apparel side. And then the, the retail social media is about an hour, two hours, depending on what is going on yeah. or, you know, and then of course travel like this, uh, things pop up that completely change everything. So, but that's usually about every day. One thing that I like, uh, that we can highlight from that is rarely do people make all of their money from the thing that you see. Yep. People who are self-employed almost always have multiple streams of income and mm-hmm. they're working on this, that, all these different things. It's mm-hmm. not the one thing, right? Like yep. I've been posting interviews with my dog lately because one went viral and it's just been kind of fun to yeah, do. for sure. And people are like, oh, that's what you're doing? It's like, yeah, I mean, kind of, but I have two murals I'm going to be working on soon. So I was working on the design process of those and the applications and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I was having different Zoom calls and stuff with different business owners to discuss strategies for their own things that they're going to be doing. Yep. Plus, I still have the full length interviews, but then those those interviews are cut up into all these clips that are besides the full thing that are going to the different social media platforms you only see the ones on this particular thing yeah but i'm also doing it on this thing and on that For thing sure. and then i still have my skateboard shop which is not like yeah. nothing i still have a lot Absolutely. of time that goes into that yeah and i feel like i mean that's probably the downfall of social media is people see your post and they that's all they see of you right so you know they don't know anything about you outside of that so i feel like i'm trying to when i go live on tiktok or if i do do things where i'm like allowing people to understand who I am. Cause you know, I, I, I feel like over the last year and a half, when you think of me or you see me, you think of Wisconsin clothing company, Yeah, which makes sense. Cause I, that's where I post my, all my social content. Right. So I feel like I've been trying to like show people like a lot more of our followers, more about me right, and more about what I do outside of just these 30 to minute long videos that I post. Yeah. Well, I think it's important. Absolutely. Again, as far as like actually building a relationship with those people, because I've followed you on Instagram for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember how I came across you or you came across me or something. I don't remember either. It was quite a while ago at this point. It was, yeah. It, it might have been back before we were Wisconsin Cooling Company. It, yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. And then I, I remember seeing your stuff blow up a lot more recently, and it was like, man, we really need to make this happen eventually. So I'm glad that yeah, it finally did happen. Yeah, and I know I, I, I'm sorry happen. I drug my feet trying oh, to dude. find a time. Dude, but that's how hey, it is with everybody. Claire, like, yeah, well, it's a long hour. ways. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, long, it's a long ways away. But that happens with a lot of people, dude, right? Yeah. Because it's not time sensitive for when something comes out. So it's kind of like I have a whole bunch of people that I know that it's like a 
when we get to it, we will get to it yeah. and we want to. And at it all some could point. be in one week. It can't do a I, lot I, of times that's how and, that happens. <laughs> you know, especially we do podcasts. We do our own podcast, Shot of Wisco, me and my my buddy, and we all of ours are through Zoom. Don't get me wrong. It's still great. It's still a great product, but like the quality, like you don't get this. Right. It's a little like bit different. They're, whoever you're interviewing, their camera quality is going to suck no matter right. what. Same with audio. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like you make it work, but like this is the best way to do it. If you can. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a lot of people that say, yeah, I'll do Zoom, right? People yeah. reach out to me or in general, like a lot of people I would love to interview. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh yeah, well, it's just remote, right? I'm like, no, I just don't want to. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm, I think I might've offended uh, somebody the other day, so I don't even say who they were, but it was this music artist and they were going to be coming through and they're relatively big. And their manager was like, yeah, what time do you want to do it? And I was like, well, this time. And their manager was like, well, but that's like, they're going to be on tour. I'm like, right. So I want to interview them while they're here. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, well, they they usually just do remote ones. And maybe I was being, I don't know, uh, egotistical prick, but I was like, it's not worth my time. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to do it remotely, like, you know how much work and energy puts into this side of my career? If I don't enjoy what I'm doing, mm -hmm. then I'm not doing it, dude. Sure. And honestly, remote interviews, I don't enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Not enough to like want to put all the rest of the work sure. that comes into it, clips yeah. and everything else, because it's a ton of work. If I'm just having a very like informal conversation where you can't really dive deep if you don't know the person. Mm -hmm. Like if you're interviewing guests, you don't sure. get to know them that well. And if, it, if I'm not enjoying it, like, don't get me wrong. I do things I don't love doing for work. Everyone, there's always parts of that. But if I'm not enjoying it, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, like, for sure. But this, I actually do enjoy. And yeah. then I become friends with a lot of guests. And then mm -hmm. different doors open up for this thing or that thing all Absolutely. the time, which is super rad. That's connections so, for you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like organic in that kind of way, sure. which is really dope. Yeah. Tom Petty's dope, dude. I feel yeah. like people everyone's just on this hip-hop game these days which i totally get it and i like that stuff but mm -hmm. i feel like we forget what some of these musicians were like and I, time has changed now where like there's so many tools with computers and stuff mm -hmm. that i was talking to somebody about this that there's a lot of music artists that i like their music but like live not necessarily because sure. they don't sound like that yep. but going back to that era like whatever they sounded like on the album that's what they actually sound like yeah. when they sing <laughs> i even feel like with music now like even with like hip-hop like they're almost looking for like those clips that could become dances like right. or clips that could be super viral right where like i've listened to a clip like oh that sounds awesome then you go listen to a song like that doesn't sound as good as i thought yeah when i you mean see, you hear the whole song yeah it's an it's because that's what's rewarding right yep. like that's how you get if i was another a music artist friend of mine he was trying to book this tour right and he's get i think he's got like a million monthly listeners on Spotify, like a lot. Yeah. But he is not big on social media at all. Mm -hmm. um, and he was posting on his Instagram, like shaking his head at how he can't even get some of these random small bars to give up their karaoke night for him to come and perform because of his Instagram following. Mm -hmm. When really like he's getting like huge numbers of streams and stuff yep. because his full music people like, but you got to care about the marketing strategy, in which case like look at brands like Quick Trip. You know, like they've yep. figured out the marketing strategy. Paige mm -hmm. and Hayden are hilarious. Yep. And they've, you, I mean, okay. Does this ever happen to you? Cause you got, you focus on like the Wisconsin content and memes and stuff quite a bit news as well, but like memes and just different things. Sure. Do you ever run into having the same content as some of these other people like uh quick trip or other brands that are sharing Wisconsin things? Um, I mean, not as much. I mean, sometimes it's about the same idea. Like the ideology behind the content is like the same, but I feel like, you know, when you do the same, I mean, there's only so many things like the Midwest goodbye, you know, right, yeah. drink was drinking Wisconsin, like there's things that all of us use. So I feel like no matter what, it's going to sound similar to someone else's stuff. Yeah. You know, where I know, like I, I didn't struggle, but like I noticed, like even when I started doing some skits, like people were like, oh, you know, a Walmart version of Charlie Barron's or sure, something like, yeah. you know, you get comments like that and it's yeah. like, no, well, you know, it's for one he's not the only person that could do it but two right. uh it's like no matter what like if if someone wanted to start creating a following with wisconsin they're gonna start creating the exact same content we're all doing now right like that doesn't change yeah but trends are already out there right like people there's so many that are on the internet and people think like i don't know why they have this idea that they have to be the only one doing this thing it's like no people who like charlie Barron or Charlie Barron's probably is all, they're also going to like quick trips content yeah. or they're also going to like your sure. content or yeah. Billy's or like all well, these other people. And I've kind of noticed like even with our content, like 
a lot of my time, like I, like when I told you that I do about an hour of, I mean, I'm still spending a lot of time watching trends, seeing if I could fit it into what I, what my knit, what our, what Wisconsin yeah. is, you know, whether it's, you know, what, cause there's a thousand trends out there. So trying yeah. to make sure that I could fit it to something that Wisconsinites would be like, Oh, relatable or you right. know, funny or whatever. Um, so a lot of time goes into like seeing if something works. Um, I mean, for the most part, like when I share other people's content on our page, for one, I always credit everybody. Right. Cause it's like, Hey, that's their stuff. Don't be an asshole. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know what? I feel like I'm getting to the point, especially like on Instagram where it's like, we get such a good following, you know, Hey, if I tag you and it gets 200,000 views, like, that's good for both of us. Right. Totally. It's a good thing. So we're, that's what I'm trying to become a platform that other people are like, Oh yeah. Like I want to be, sh-. we're starting to get people share stuff with us, which is right. cool. Um, and, but I feel like, you know, like we're never going to share Charlie stuff. We're never going to share Cause that's their stuff. They're huge. Right. You know what I mean? Where I feel like that's where you draw the line. Like, Hey, like I'm not, I would never use Charlie's face for, you know, right for views or anything like that. Like I'm like thinking of like smaller creators mm-hmm. that create something cool in Wisconsin, like that we can kind of help both sides. Right. Yeah. Well, I think collaboration in that kind of standpoint Absolutely. always helps. Right. And any, any relationship business or otherwise has to be mutually beneficial. Oh, yeah. Otherwise it's not really going to work. Yeah. So if you can look at like, well, what am I getting out of this? But what can I do with my platform that doesn't hurt me, but still helps them? Yeah. There's a lot of ways to be able to do that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like if Charlie or like you betcha miles, if they like said, Hey, we have a skit and want you to be in it. Yeah. I'd be in it. Tomorrow. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, but then it would make sense though. Yeah, right. Because right. you're not just sharing yeah. their thing. It's something uh-huh. that you're also, uh, you know, a part of, which I have some things to share with you. Yeah. Do you like coffee? Yeah. Dope. Cool. Cause I have this coffee from minimum, minimum wage, Tim. This is from Honduras. So that's for you. Awesome. This whole bean. So you got to grind it, but whole bean is always better. Anyways, it's Love more, that. way more fresh. Um, he went to school at UWC here in Eau Claire, but he lives over in Minneapolis and it's just a dope boutique coffee brand that he's trying to get in more spaces. I love so that. you get that coffee to take Thank home with you. you. And then we give away a bag of coffee through the show. Let's go. So one person listening just has to do this super easy. Follow minimum wage Tim on Instagram and then DM the password from this episode, which is Bucky's brew. So all you gotta do is that, and then you'll be entered. And I think last time there's only like a dozen people that entered. So you should enter because there's a good chance that you're going to win this. And then the newest one, which I'm super excited about, um, another brand that I followed like a while ago, Mayana Chocolate. Have you heard of them? No. They're from Spooner. Really? Spooner, Wisconsin has really? a chocolate factory and it's the country's best chocolate. Wow. I'm not kidding. It's like, I'm, it's I'm so good. Check it out. Yes. So that's what all this is on the table with Mother's Day coming up. This would be the move. Um, I had one of these last night. So I'm going to give you one of these mini okay. bars that you can take home with you or you can take a bite now if you want. It's, But I'm telling you, sure. this is the kind of chocolate that like I, I bit into it the first time. And it was one of those times where you have a bite that's so good that you like close your eyes and, and you're, you're like, like, oh my gosh, I got to like tune everything out and just focus on how good this is. I love it. Yeah. But they're Spooner. in Wisconsin. I know. Yeah. So like, that's what makes me so excited about it. My uh, older daughter. I'm have to go follow them. Yeah. Well, my older daughter's super into um, the new Willy Wonka movie. Sure. So I'm like, this is perfect. Now, yeah. now their dad's working with a chocolate company. I'm going to yeah. try to take them up to the, to the factory and everything. That'd be super it's gonna cool. It's going to be dope. So if you want to get my honest chocolate, they're sold in a bunch of different places. You can get them at Hy-Vee, but you can go to their website, Myana Chocolate, and use the promo code PASSION for 25% off. And then you could be, uh, you know, the king for Mother's Day this year. Awesome. Do you want to do a rapid fire of questions? Sure. Cool. I always think they make for good little clips. Plus, this one being like all about Wisconsin, I finally get an excuse to ask a lot of these things. What's your favorite cheese? Swiss. What's your favorite cheese curds from where? Um, I'll say Culver's. No way! Mm-hmm. Culver's, as they're fast food, they're good, but they're not the best ones in my opinion. No, they're not. But I mean, I could have chose like, I mean, there's like a thousand bars that have better cheese curds, but yeah. I'm like trying to think which one am I going to choose? You know what I mean? Like, I could say like the call-ins got great. Yeah. Supper clubs got great, but... It's a good excuse for people to get down to your area of the state. Yeah. Specifically to do... We did a... Uh, Visit Eau Claire did a cheese curd crawl last year. Sure. Where they had like a dozen different places that have really good cheese curds in Eau Claire. And then that was part of like the it, tourism. Yeah, dude. Yeah. If they're from Wisconsin, they're going to be good. That's true. Who has the best old fashions? How are they made? Um, The best old fashion, I would have to say... Oh, this is kind of up in the air. I'm going to have to say it is the Black Angus in Prairie du Chien. 
What's the difference? Because they, they, they make them in a few different ways, right? Sometimes so they're sweet, The only reason I like it, I mean, I know everyone in Wisconsin is going to say that uh, you have to have a brandy old-fashioned yeah. because that's Wisconsin, but I love a good bourbon old-fashioned. Okay. And they have like the biggest wall of bourbon. Oh, sure. So you have like any option. And the guy is like a expertise, the owner. Yeah. And we went and did some, some stuff for him and he made me probably the best old-fashioned I ever had in my life. Dude, I feel like you could start incorporating that more into what you do just bar hopping anyways, oh, right? Because sure. there's Wisconsin dive bars guy. Yeah, and like and Jared's awesome. Yeah, I, and he's crushing it with it. And like, I see that. I'm like, dude, I want to just go bar hop Wisconsin yeah, and like he's make a, a living gig. out of it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, like that's killer. Speaking of that, who's your favorite Wisconsin content creator? Um, Wisconsin content creator. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Hmm, I'm trying to think. I mean, I can say passion pod. Yeah. Well, <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> I am I'm trying Wisconsin. to think of like, even like, t- uh, tr- I mean, there's like a couple that I could name off rip. I mean, obviously Jared from Wisco dive bars, but, uh, Michelle Schultz, she's Shelly. She's a supper clubber girl. Oh, cool. Um, she goes to all these supper clubs. She's one of my favorites to, to watch. Cause I just love seeing supper club stuff. Yeah. Um, I would say outside of those two. I mean, I'd probably say Charlie, sure. just because he does it so well. Yeah, I and, feel like, and his and his joke, like being in this in the skit space, like doing skits, like the things he says, like he they're, they're so well thought of. Yeah, like I just got you got to give flowers and flowers do. I mean, that's why yeah. he's so great. Well, dude, because he was has an acting background, like he was he, an actor in yes, L.A. Yes, like people don't. I feel like people don't know that, but he was actually pursuing that mm-hmm. prior to getting into the Wisconsin yeah. stuff. That's why he's good yeah. at it. And I'd say like the most, <laughs> probably the most relatable to me i mean miles from you betcha i know he's not just wisconsin he's midwest yeah but i i'm i am now a dad just like he is yeah like a lot of his like dad stuff he does and a lot of his i mean i drink bush light i mean right. I mean, just a lot of things sure. that make sense for that he does like make skits about that like literally are relatable to my life yeah so he sure. but like i said there's a, a lot of them like jaron clinch fishing um kristen potega is a great fishing one i mean i can go on forever but ryan yeah. rubel Ryan Rubel, yep. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, he's another one. Okay, so what's your favorite Wisconsin brand besides your own? Um, it, it'd be hard to say not Quick Trip just because, I mean, I think they do everything, like, so perfectly. Totally. And, you know, like I said, they make all their food. They do it all in-house. Their marketing is super funny. Did you it's, see the latest one that they did with Charlie where he was, like, in the in back that, yeah, battering him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where, I, like I said, I, I feel like a lot of big brands like them go super corporate yeah with their socials and they keep it super light and fun yeah so i would say them i mean honestly outside of that there's a lot i mean i would probably say like matthew's archery because i'm a huge art i'm a huge bow hunter oh okay um or vortex optic sure um which is in my backyard just up the, the road for me so probably one of those guys i'm trying to think if there's any brand like like big brands outside of that i mean line and kugels Oh, line and cool. Yeah. Summer shanty. It's, it, we're, we're hitting summer shanty time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. If you could collaborate with any brand for like a capsule of clothing, you know, like Supreme will do that with a brand, right? And it'll be out of nowhere. They'll do a North Face collab or whatever. If you could do a capsule of clothing with one brand that's going to come out underneath Wisconsin Clothing Co., what's it going to be? Um, I would probably say Miller Lite. Dude, I want to work with Miller Lite. Oh, I mean, PBR. I mean, a lot of people think PBR is not a Wisconsin beer anymore. Um, right. But I would say probably those two or, um, I mean, Line and Kugels is up there. New Glares. Yeah. I think I can make a really cool spotted cow shirt. <laughs> you, dude, you should. Yeah. Even just for like a giveaway, do a one-off thing. I bet oh, they'd be sure. stoked. And it, I mean, I guess it's not like you have unlimited time, but still. Okay. What's the best style trend? Not that you are like that you're selling to blue collar people more. So you're not going to fashion shows, but still what's the best style trend? Um, I mean, right now, probably I would say for one rope caps. I actually really like those too. Yep. Everybody yeah. wears rope caps nowadays. I mean, everyone, yep. I feel like we are all stuck in the, the Richardson trucker caps that everyone wears. Yeah. Like I'm wearing right now, yep. but I'd say rope caps outside of that. I mean, you can never go wrong with flannels, especially in Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's any other trends. What's um, the worst one? <laughs> Wearing, wearing shorts in the middle of winter. I'm just kidding. <laughs> dude, for <laughs> real, That's, though. Yeah. Like, gym like, shorts, how, middle how of winter. How tough are you? <laughs> yeah, dude, with their tall white socks and yeah, dad like, shoes. Yeah, yeah, we get it. You don't feel cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, you do. You just don't want to admit yeah. to it. What's your favorite part of your day? Um, 
when I get home to my family. Dude, what a wholesome thing to say. Yeah, no, I, I got a, I got a 16 month boy at home. So oh, cool. Yeah. I feel like you're the worst year, or I shouldn't say the worst. The most difficult was three. Yeah. I got two kids. I got an 11 year old and a seven year old. Well, Everyone says that's terrible. Coming down twos. the pipeline, <laughs> dude. Three is when they're just old enough to realize that they don't have to listen. Yeah, they they can start weighing in their mind if sure. it's worth the consequence. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and he's man. just starting to walk so that we're already seeing like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. But they, I feel like they're not purposely being mischievous yet. Like mm-hmm. I said, they get to a point where their their brains are developed enough to realize like there's consequences, but the degree of consequence varies. Sure. So they start testing to yep. see what can I get yep. away with. That was when it was tough for me. What's the worst part of your day? Um, The worst part of my day is probably that hour after eating lunch. (laughs) If I had to be honest, because it's the lull, I need coffee. But I would say probably the worst part of my day is, um, I don't want to say like awkward conversations with employees. Oh yeah. Uh, Like not, I'm not saying awkward, like we have awkward conversations. I have these conversations like normal, but like, hey, you didn't do your job right. Right. I don't love that. Yeah. But um, you know, that's part of the gig. Dude, that's part of parenting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I tell my kids all the time. Tough love. I don't want to yell. Like, the amount I don't want to yell at you. Oh, my God. Please. Yeah. I don't want to yell like, at you. Like, stop making me yell at that. you. <laughs> right. I don't want to be I don't want to be mean. Don't make yeah. me be mean. Okay. Yeah. Totally different subject. But I know that, uh, obviously, this being a very Wisconsin episode. What's your favorite Packers moment that you can remember? Um, favorite Packers moment would probably be Brett Favre. Oakland Raiders when what was it his his dad died his dad died it was a Monday night and he went nuts that was probably one of my favorite most emotional games yeah um I mean the Super Bowl win with Aaron was probably up there but I I I just truly think for what that stood for sure to me that just it's like that's what stands out to me sure yeah that was a pretty iconic one mine was nick collins before he uh had his neck injury in the super bowl his pick six he goes to his knees like celebrating and you see behind him the yellow flags being thrown for but because we're green and gold it just like fits so well yeah oh for sure that was i mean i could have said any bears game (laughs) <laughs> because usually all of them are good dude i feel like that's like the move right now is just talk about how the bears still suck because they yeah. do still suck yeah. we've won the last like 10 in a row or whatever which yeah. is pretty dope okay if someone's coming to visit wisconsin because we've been talking about how awesome it is if they have one weekend here say they're from the east coast or whatever they have one weekend in wisconsin what are you going to take them and show them around what are you guys going to do okay so like are you saying like choose places in wisconsin to go to yeah how are you going to spend the weekend like is it going to include a packers game are you going to go specifically to a stadium are you going to go camping like what is it going to look like okay so for one thing the first thing that i'm going to do just so people could really understand wisconsinites is we are going to go to the most hole in the spot bar yes that that place that whatever place we're at i'm not talking your place that has uh, burgers or has grills. I'm talking like they have Jack's pizza and they have chips and that's it. We're going to go to the biggest hole in the spot bar and you're going to, we're going to talk to everyone there yeah. to, to give you some like, Oh my gosh. Cause you'll never forget those moments. Right. Um, outside of that, I mean, obviously Packer game would work. I honestly think to be able to truly see like what Wisconsin's about, um, being able to like see door County or see even, um, like I'm going to forget the name of, Oh my gosh, what's the state park next to the Dells in Baraboo? Um, it's uh, got the Devil's r- Lake. Devil's Lake. Yeah. I would take. I, we go to Devil's Lake a lot. I, apparently, not enough that for me to remember the name. But I, I would go somewhere like that so they could see the beauty part of things. Yeah. Um, and then honestly, if it's summertime, we're gonna get go out. We're gonna rent a pontoon. We're gonna sit on a lake. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to drink some beers and we're going to just show you how peaceful it is in Wisconsin in the summertime. Yeah, dude, Wisconsin summers are the best. They're like the perfect temperature. I have a cabin up on a lake and like it really doesn't get any better. People, no. I get it. Colorado is beautiful with mountains and everything. And I'm not saying Wisconsin's better, but I am saying that Wisconsin state parks and our like state forests are beautiful and drastically underrated. People mm-hmm. do not realize how awesome they are and they're not crowded. No, dude, for sure. I hiked. There's a, I forget what the trail is. Great Northern state trail or something. Mm-hmm. There's like a 1200 mile trail that goes from like the East coast through like Nebraska. Right. Yeah. And it goes right by my cabin, like sure. literally right by it a mile away, maybe. And we, my parents, my whole family, like we used to always go hike to this overlook. Cause it's like three quarters of a mile there and back. Mm-hmm. So it was like a quick little family yep. hike. Didn't realize until way later that that's a small little segment 
of this huge trail. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, I hiked 25 miles of the trail over two days, just like not with the right equipment. So my back hurt so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I like carried everything and camped or whatever. I saw one person for five minutes that the whole two days, sure. one person. And it was because it was a volunteer who was maintaining his part, part of the trail with a machete, just making sure that like any down trees were moved. That mm -hmm. was it. But like the, you can go to so many of these places. Of course, there's a few crowded places. Devil's Lake can get crowded in the summer, but oh, like sure. in general, man, it's gorgeous. If yeah. you want to get lost in nature, Wisconsin is a great place. And, for and it. I feel like, you know, like we've posted videos like about how cool Wisconsin is and it shows Bayfield, Wisconsin, the Apostle Islands. Yeah. You know, it shows um like a lot of like the I'm gonna probably mess this up. Ch Chiquamagon, Nicolay, Chiquamagon. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, you know, it shows a lot of that. It shows Superior, how beautiful Lake Superior, like all these areas. And like I showed it throughout a collage video and people were like, that's not Wisconsin. I'm like, dude, there's yep. so much. Like people think of small towns, they think of quick trips being on every corner, which that's true. Yeah. But they don't think of like the actual outdoors aspect of Wisconsin. No, they think of farmland. Yeah. And yeah. it's so much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the state is farmland. Do we have a lot of farms? Of course, obviously. We're the mm -hmm. dairy state. But our forests, yeah, it's Shawamigan. I know that because my cabin's in the Shawamigan National Forest. Yeah. Um, but but anyways, like it there's a lot of the state that's covered like that. Okay. Let's talk about goals and where you want to be. Cause in the last like two years, like you said, you went from a totally different name brand with not really a significant social media like status at all or following grown into one of the bigger ones in Wisconsin, as far as I'm aware, mm -hmm. what are the goals then for the next little while here? What are you trying to achieve? Obviously a hundred K would be great, but other sure. than that, you know, like what are you trying to do? I mean, yeah, for the most part, like my goal and I'm not like a huge numbers guy. I mean, I feel like I'm like when you, hear this where you hear this podcast or you see me on the videos like i'm the same dude no matter what right you you could come down to keeler and catch me at the bar and i i nothing about me changes at any point i'm right. just truly me right um so i feel like for my goal for our brand is for one to it's i don't think of it as like a following i just think of it as like jo building our community of proud wisconsinites yeah um something that people can get behind be able to take time out of their day to see social media and see what's going on throughout the state of wisconsin through our stuff um, and then I feel like, just like I said before, being able to provi keep providing affordable clothing for the whole state, yeah. that means more than just a Nike sign or an Under Armour sign where we have designs for supper clubs, dive bars, for state parks, for all this other cool stuff yeah. that allows you to represent Wisconsin with clothes. Right. So I feel like that's going to be our two main goals is to just keep building our community of great people um, and just kind of see where it takes us. Yeah, man. I think that's the big thing, right? Like you find what your niche is, you look at what you're capable of doing that is different than what anybody mm -hmm. else is doing and then double down on that. And I completely agree. Like I said, the biggest part is the fact that you guys actually own the manufacturing side yep. because nobody else does. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, it's a middleman situation and they're drop shipping or whatever the situation is. It's just, it's never going to be the same as what you guys can do for other people, which mm -hmm. I would love to see you guys continue to grow in that way. And then even when, you know, stuff that's sold with Wisconsin on it, even and when it's not your brand it's all just from you guys anyways yeah you know rather than people outsourcing to god knows where yeah and i feel like you know we're actually in the process and i've never we, you know we, i haven't even told anybody this but we just got through we're working with somebody out of west bend that we're trying to because right now we print on a lot of other brands yeah okay so district bella canvas you know yeah. we're not printing on a wisconsin clothing company shirt right but we're working towards that direction cool. where the clothes that you get from us are manufactured Wisconsin clothing company clothes. Oh, sure. Um, we'll still do the decorating, Yeah. but we're going to be getting the clothes. So you're not wearing a Gildan shirt or whatever brand we use. Right, yeah. You're wearing our stuff yeah. and we've fully developed it. So we're kind of working towards that direction to make it just a little bit more, a little more legitimized. Sure. I don't want to say legitimate. I mean, that's not. I, I know what you're saying. You say Wisconsin Clothing Co. People want to know, is it fully made in Wisconsin? But isn't that going to have to be a totally different price point? Um, no. Are you going to offer both? No, we've actually found it that it's, it honestly is a little more, more favorable. Really? For us to do that. Just because of shipping? Just because, I mean, for the, pre for the people that we're going to be working with, um, and a couple of them were overseas that there's a couple in the US, but um, for the most part, we'll be getting the shirt for the same price as we would be getting it from right. a vendor. Wow. So 
our prices aren't going to change. Hey, and here's the thing is if it did, we're not changing where our end price is because I care about what people are spending on our website. Right. I don't want people to spend $120 on two hoodies on one hoodie. Right. I mean, my, my wife loves Lululemon, so I know how fast that goes. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, one pair of joggers is $120. Right. I just know Wisconsinites and I'm not saying, you know, that we're, we're cheap people, but I just know we're hardworking. And like I said, I feel like this is, a way for us to represent who we truly are through our clothes. And like I said, I don't want to break your bank. I don't right. want to break anybody's bank because that's not the goal. People's expendable income is going into buying that pontoon. Yeah. Hey, it's not going into hey, their wardrobe. Hey, <laughs> beer prices are going up. So we want to make sure we're not taken away from that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very true. Yeah. All right. So coming towards the end of the show, I always ask this question every episode, which I told you about before. So hopefully you have a great story to share. When you do something that you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences that are very meaningful. They're rarely financially driven. What's the st uh, story of an experience you can share? Um, I've, I mean, for the most part, and this is something that I think it's just a small town person in me where, you know, as our followers grow, I still don't think of myself as someone who like people are going to know who like some, there's going to be some people and don't get me wrong. It's not like I go somewhere and people are like, Oh my God. Like it's Give not like that. Autograph. But yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I've had a couple times where like I was at a wedding in Beloit and like a young group of people, like kids, like came yeah. up and were like, Oh my God, you're Wisconsin cooling company. And like. Just from like where I grew up, very small town, rarely use social medias on my own personal pages. Right. Like to ever think that someone else would know who I am without me even knowing them is just something that like I feel like it's taken for granted. Um, where it kind of shows just kind of how influential anybody on social media can be totally. towards anybody. You know, whether or not it's Charlie Barron's and it's thousands of people or it's me and it's five five kids at in Beloit. But I feel like that those are the, the moments that for me, it's like, okay, this is worth it. Yeah. You know, I don't care how much clothes we sell, but like to say like these kids are like, oh my God, we went to Devil's Lake the other weekend yeah. because you said you said it was awesome. We didn't even know about it. Right. Like our parents took us there. Like for me, it's like, that is the coolest thing yeah. in the world. Or like for for people who have no idea about a lot of Wisconsin, they just know about the where they live, like that they could go to my page and figure out cool things to do. Yeah. Or, you know, like, hey, we're in Door County. Let's go check to see if Corey went to any bars or any supper clubs up there. See, see, you know, what, what was the vibe? Right. Like, I just, I love uh, being a resource to people. And I just love being able to share positivity towards people. Because I feel like there's just definitely not enough in our world today. And I'm never, you're never going to, you know, in this 30, 40 minutes, have, I don't think you'll never see an ounce of negativity out of me. Yeah. That's just not who I am. I'm just a very positive person towards everybody. So I feel like be, me being able to spend my day doing that for other people is just a blessing. Yeah. Well, and all the other opportunities that are going to keep coming, right? Yeah. All of a sudden having an excuse to go camping in Door County and call it work. Because realistically <laughs> it is to a certain degree. Yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Even today, like coming up to kick it in Eau Claire and we'll go, I'll show you around or whatever. This is just a fun day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Kind of regardless. But being able to share something that you care about and having an impact on people like it doesn't really get a whole lot better than that absolutely well thank you so much for coming on the hey, show I appreciate dude it. this was fun i'm yeah. glad that we actually eventually did make it work yeah i, I, hope, I, I hope i was good no you were at, yeah no you were incredible you're very wisconsin so awesome it's perfect cool <laughs> thank you for joining us for this episode of the passion pod we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did we'll see you soon